So I usually like giving you guys, you know, a nice body comparison next to the snake. And yeah, this is, you know, what, what I noticed between these and <laughs> Eastern milk snakes is that the Prairie Kings are a bit more stouter for sure. I believe they both achieve relatively similar length. This one is close, if not at three foot. <laughs> yeah, she likes to find every nook and cranny and just slide through it. But uh, you can kind of get a, a guesstimate. But man, I hope you guys can tell just how kind of swollen. It's not even the lower third. It's almost like <laughs> half her whole body is swollen. So yeah, I wonder how, how much longer her gestation will be until she's ready to pop some eggs out because they are all egg layers in the uh, Lampropeltis genus. And I'm not terribly well versed on the species. I've actually found them a couple times or I've seen them a couple times this season. And then the last time I seen them was 2017. So it's been basically a five year drought. I mean, I never really looked for these animals, but it's nice to reconnect with something I haven't seen in so long, a species I haven't seen in so long. And like I said earlier, I'm very close to my county. I'm in a different county, but I'm very close. And it's nice that I don't have to drive too far to, to have encountered this. And this is the first flip. <laughs> a very pretty animal. So I'm gonna get quickly some voucher shots and then let her on her way, you know, really keep it to the minimum, especially when it's a, a gravid female. You don't want her to, uh, what they can do if they're under dire stress is that they'll not retain the eggs, but they'll basically nuke the <laughs> the pregnancy. They'll just, they'll just, um, it's hard to explain. They basically, they basically abort laying their eggs. And so they'll just get all the nutrients back into their bodies and not egg lay. just so you guys can see the pattern and the color you know a very dull and uh, boring <laughs> coloration i mean not every snake can be red or orange or tan i actually like the pattern of these and i actually like the eye the the, the eye color it's actually a bit of a, a orange yellowish kind of color kind of a serious looking face too <laughs> A very serious face. <laughs> but I can see I can see how this blends in perfectly with like a lot of uh, a lot of landscape and habitats like prairies and and woodlands. Man, what a pretty snake. Despite being, you know, very grounded color-wise, very neutral. But, you know, like I said, just one of those animals I haven't found in a long time. And it's nice that I've gotten to see a couple examples, and this has been the best example so far this season. At a shed, and, and about to, you know, pass on the next generation of prairie kings, which is nice. I don't believe they're a species of concern. It's just that they're so secretive, even compared to like things like milk snakes and whatnot. Very cool. Let's see if we get a little bit of a heads up on that face. And she's definitely a bit more defensive now. You notice that she's not really tongue flicking or anything. She's just using her eye mostly and just wondering what my next move is. I tend to notice that with snakes, once they stand their ground, and you also notice the heavy breathing, sometimes they don't even tongue flick anymore, they just stay. So I'm done with this female, I'm putting her back under her cover, and then let's get to it. And so about half an hour, 45 minutes later, another prairie king. So this ties my record for finding two in one day. And I mean, not personally, I found, I've been with others that, that I found prairie kings, but to see, that's probably a better word, to see two in one day. And you might be thinking to yourself, this one looks, you know, coloration wise, 
maybe more to my liking. I mean, to each their own, right? To me, I, I love these ones to have more of that, that deeper burgundy brown. And oddly enough, or just funny enough, this one's in shed. So this would have been a stunner at a shed because it still looks good even in shed. And you know, this, this is a female again. Um, for me, it's very hard to discern because it does seem a bit swollen. I, I'm gonna I'm a go with the, this is another grabbed female. And this kind of shows a little bit of size disparity. It could be that this one is younger or has reached a maximum length that isn't terribly that big. Still a stout bodied serpent. Yeah, I'm leaning towards this one's gravity as well. So my time with this one will be short as well to minimize the stress. But what a day. I mean, this has made the day so far being in this beautiful habitat and seeing two beautiful and very different examples of the Prairie King. Yeah, too bad overall. I'm really liking this female coloration wise. Really pretty. And of course she was under some cover so she can cook her her embryo so to speak or you know properly thermoregulate before egg laying. I don't believe it should be terribly long. I think they do lay eggs at probably the end of this month. Man, what a beauty. If I gently turn it over, you can see out of shed, there'd probably be a bit of a cream slash a little bit of a yellow to her venter. And she's displaying more of the, uh, the other typical defense, which is kind of balling up and kind of just hope the, the threat goes away. But no, for the most part, very lovely, <laughs> lovely female. Very caring. Let's get a view of that face. Has a little bit of damage on one of the head scales as well. What a pretty girl, look at that, going to escape. I'll just put her back under her cover instead of her just fleeing away. Beautiful landscape. Ah, oh, and the majestic tripod. Living free and wild as it should be. All right, so I switched up locations and I'm back to where I was a couple days ago where we found some of those garters and the boards I laid out, as I say, is for other species here. It's not terribly, it's not terribly high diversity wise, but we got the target I'm about to show her in a bit, but man, what a successful day. And so guys, I've reunited with my milks. As I said previously, the cover boards are to survey whatever, cold blooded or warm blooded. But of course, the target is always the milk snakes. You, I just, you just can't get enough of milk snakes. They're so beautiful and amazing. And so this is our second Lampropeltis of the day. I don't get to say that too often, especially here in central Illinois. And this is a, another beast. You know, the milk snakes in this population, they get quite large, the females or whatever. You know, this is probably close to three foot, but you can notice that the, the uh, diameter, the stoutness. You know, this is similar to the uh, to the first Prairie King that we found, but it doesn't have the same stoutness. That being said, Lampropeltis in general, they're still stout bodied serpents, but yeah, that Prairie King definitely takes the cake. It has been, it's more muscular, larger. These are a bit more gracile in the Lampropeltis genus. There's a Hover fly. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. Just landed on me. Hey, it's that type of day. 
but um, I'm just gonna get a couple shots with this because this this female does seem to be in shed and look how beautiful it is even in shed just like that other prairie king so what a shame I'm getting all these in shed girls but I get what I can take but yes eastern milk snake not much to say besides they feel the same ecological niche you know once they're at, once they're adults they're great pest control they love rodents You can also see, I'll, I'll give you guys a close-up, but the venter has a bit of damaged scales and and whatnot. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, this seems to just be going into shed. You can tell by the venter, and this is what I was talking about, about damage and some of the some of the ventral scales. Yeah, this is very pretty. And look, look at the head marking. If you guys go back to the first one we found earlier in the season, completely different head marking. So I'll keep, I'll add that to the catalog of the uh, individuals in this population. But as you can see in, in form, very similar to uh, Prairie Kings. Only difference is the uh, maximum diameter that each species has, and of course the coloration. They're called milk snakes for a reason. But yeah, I'll keep the stress to a minimum. Take a couple shots and let her on her way so she can shed out fully. This one has an interesting pattern altogether in all honesty. Oh man. It's just barely going into shed. So it's either just barely or it's about to come out of shed and then actually shed its skin. But man, I can't stop looking how pretty this one is. Awesome.